On this episode of WTF, we're going to cover three different types of smash burgers. A classic beef, a savory duck, and our own plant-based ground beef. Hey, this is Chef Scott and Janie, and welcome to WTF, where we help you transform food in your kitchen. So remember to subscribe and also stick around for our weekly giveaway. Now this week, we are showing you three recipes for different types of smash burgers, a classic beef, a savory duck, my favorite, and also a plant-based ground, plant ground beef that uh, is pretty indistinguishable, I think, from the original mm. in a lot of ways. Scott, let's start with what is a smash burger and why is this so popular? So a smash burger is a very simple burger. It's a, it's an old diner food. It's done on a griddle rather than a grill. Mm -hmm. uh, so, you know, a plancha, flat top, whatever you want to call it. And basically you just take a, a meatball. They look just like that. Mm -hmm. It's just ground beef or whatever it is you're making and you smash it down. And that way you're creating a lot of surface area that's going to get that Maillard reaction, which is the, uh, the browning of the proteins. And then when you flip it, it's basically done. You can cheese it. You can have these burgers in and out in less than two minutes. All right. Yeah, so it's, it's my personal favorite type of burger because you can eat four of them. Um, but <laughs> but it, it's a great way to just have like a perfect beef cheese bun ratio and not have to worry about you know an eight ounce eight ounce like giant burger all right um, and we're going to be kind of talking a little bit about each of these recipes and doing a little bit of demo so if you have one recipe that you really love and want to know about right away links will be in the description below so you can jump right down to that section um, let's start with the beef right so when you're doing a beef ground burger or Ground smash beef. Yeah. ground beef smash burger. <laughs> what do you recommend for fat ratios? You know, like, and how big of a portion do you think is kind of like ideal? So you can go to your grocery store and you can get whatever beef you want. Mm -hmm. The more fat, the better it's going to, you know, crisp up and uh, kind of get that lacy edge. So there's a little bit of crispiness to it. Uh, the less you're going to get a very lean burger that's going to be almost dry. Yeah. So I like to go around 80%. Uh, lean to 20% fat. You can go even more than that, but just know that the more you go, uh, you'll have little pockets that completely melt out and it'll be uh, not as perfect as you know, around the 80 is. And if you're grinding your own, then you can absolutely change up the beef and, and really kind of gauge your ratios depending on what you're doing. But stick with the 80 just to get that you know perfect uh, texture. Yeah, and I usually see them, the patties are like a little smaller than like a, like yeah. a, right, like a hamburger, right? Yeah, so around two ounce is oh. a great size. All right. Uh, you can then double it up and you get to four ounces, which is still, you know, you get like beef cheese, beef cheese. It's, it's, it's a great thing. <laughs> uh, but they're easy because you don't want to have to be smashing down eight ounces. It would be, you know, the size of a dinner plate and nobody has buns that big. But yeah, they're just small two ounce sizes. The best thing you can use literally is a, uh, a scoop. So you can just scoop them right out and they're pretty much perfect. Yeah, I think that's a great starter recipe. We have it up on the blog. Again, links in the description below. Should we taste test the right, the uh, the ground beef first before you, we move you on? You want to taste test Let's it right now? It. Let's, Let's do, do it. it. Okay, so we have one here. I'm just gonna cut it down the middle because they are juicy. Mm -hmm. You don't want to then uh, you know have it go everywhere. So we have the juice. Okay, and I noticed that you wrapped these in brown paper. Why <laughs> is there a reason why you did there that, or is just a, for presentation? There is a reason because I actually owned Thank a burger you. restaurant for uh, a while, and when you wrap that burger, you're going to help steam that bun. You're mm -hmm. going to make sure that cheese is melty, and you mm -hmm. can have just contain That's all great. this wonderful juice within the burger itself. Mm -hmm. And this is my favorite because look at that ratio. It's it's almost completely even bun to burger. You got that cheese in there that's nice and melty. Let's dig in. Ooh, it's still warm. I like that. Mmm. Really mm. nice. I'm taking small bites. Mm-hmm. You got two more to go. <laughs> yep. We'll just keep rolling right through. Wow. I love it. Mm-hmm. It's juicy. It's yep. a little spongy. This is kind of like yeah, like what you think about when you think of it. So no, no modernist pantry techniques in here, just a classic, <laughs> simple burger. Right, and you get that perfect bun, you want it nice and soft. Ooh, 
Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> I just got make a bite sure of it's pepper crispy. in there. <laughs> you toast the bun too. There's all those layers mm -hmm. of such a simple thing done so right. But then we move down the line and we get to something like the duck burger. Yeah, let's talk about the really duck burger. Which really takes this to the next level. Because mm -hmm. we talked about fat, right? The fat makes the burger really juicy, really wonderful. Sometimes people equate juiciness to like water. But it's really fat is that mm -hmm. is going to give you that juiciness. So we made a duck burger. We can get right into the demo here. Yeah. Where we're using 60% meat. Mm-hmm. And we're using 40% fat. Wow. And now people may say, but you said when you do that, you'll get a big separation. Mm -hmm. uh, but let me just put in some porcini mushrooms that have been rehydrated as well. Oh, that's ooh. just for some extra savoriness. Mm -hmm. We have an ingredient that's going to help keep all of those together so that when we do smash it, it's not going to completely, you know, lace out and you'll have holes and pockets there and in, in mm -hmm. there. You could do this with ground beef, but ground beef's a little bit more sturdy, so you'll get a different texture. Okay. You get a very like almost bouncy texture. Yep. Remember the, the McRib that we did? Yep. McRib copycat. Mm -hmm. So with the duck, we find that it's like it gives it just a little bit more texture when we use sodium tripolyphosphate, okay. which is an emulsifier for meats, uh, so that it gives you more of a beef texture and uh, it completely emulsifies in that fat. So about uh, one kilogram of uh, meat and fat, and then two grams of sodium tripolyphosphate. Yeah, so very little. That's like what, 0 0.2%? 0 0.2%, yeah. yeah. So mm -hmm. if you get a, a bag of it, it's going to last you a while, but if you're making these burgers, maybe it'll go pretty mm -hmm. quick. So this takes 15 seconds. I can go from broken down duck, a little bit of porcinis, and the fat to burgers ready to be cooked in about 15 seconds. So mm -hmm. we can do that right now. Great. So, if I take this now and I scoop it, you can then look Ooh. and you have a really beautiful burger. Mm -hmm. It stands up on its own, yep. so I can smash it out. If it Sometimes if you let this, uh, or if it doesn't emulsify, if you tried to do this without sodium tripolyphosphate, it would completely, you know, pancake out. This is holding together because of that emulsification yes. process. And you can learn all about sodium tripolyphosphate in the links in the description below. We've done a lot of episodes on it. Yep. It's an awesome ingredient. It works every time. Uh, so this then can go right on the plancha and we can make a great burger out of it. Cool. Well, if you are one of our keto viewers, this would be a great burger for you at the 40% fat. It's yeah. delicious. And I also noticed that you're not seasoning any of these before, um, before gr grilling. Correct. So you're kind of doing all that after. So I, I do it as I grill them. Mm -hmm. And the reason we do that is that if I add salt right now, the salt hydrates a lot of the proteins, which mm -hmm. then gives you that you. sausage texture. Oh, so, interesting. So that's... And this one you can absolutely see. You can just see that how much fat is in there. It is completely coming out. Yep, you can it's totally see. It's not saturating the bun, which is great because mm -hmm. it's, a, it's held within that meat. Yeah, we love tripolyphosphate. I think it is a, a fantastic product. Yeah, it's very forgiving. You can add it and it's going to work. Yep, still delicious. Mmm, so good. I don't have to say anything. <laughs> Try it. It's yeah. wonderful. Yeah, it's, I mean, if you like duck, it's basically like like a juicy, delicious duck. But even if you, mm. just like a super savory, rich burger, mm. this is gonna be the best way to go. You know that because Jamie took two bites, mm -hmm. right? <laughs> it's so good. And we have these extra ones for later. Fantastic. Uh, and then we move from that, we can go right into the plant base. I'm just okay. gonna take right. this off for, for now. And okay. While you're doing that, I do want to talk about the giveaway before yeah. I forget. So this week's giveaway will be, you have a choice. You can either get a bag of the tripolyphosphate, make a duck burger, or you can get a bag of the burger binder if you decide you want to make the plant-based burger. So in order to, leave in, to win, just leave in the comments below something that you would like for us to talk about in an additional episode where we're doing something three ways. Um, it's been really fun doing these, I think. You know, we like being able to offer you, know, you guys something every week when we can because we know that people are coming here and they have different dietary requirements, yeah. different things that you're looking for. So we're trying to, trying to offer a little bit of something for everybody. All right, now jumping into the plant-based burger, I know this one is you know, making the ground beef itself is a lot of work. Um, we are not gonna demo that on screen today, mm -hmm. 
but we're going to have you know some videos up about it. You can find that in the links in the description below. But can you just talk a little bit about the process of how that ground beef came together? Sure. So we made this recipe just over two years ago. Uh, it's kind of like a, a child of mine. <laughs> it, it was something that we wanted to try. We, we were able to do it, and we constantly progressed in doing it. So we take um, textured vegetable protein. That's the main ingredient a little bit of fava bean protein, that's going to be one of the binder, and then uh, an ingredient called burger binder. And that's going to help bring it all together so when it cooks, it has that really meaty bite. Mm -hmm. uh, it, it just pulls, it, it feels like you're eating a, a, a traditional burger. Uh, but then we also add it into the fat, so the fat melts, the fat's juicy. All these wonderful things that we want out of a burger mm -hmm. is what we were able to do with it. And if you've watched our videos about this uh, particular recipe, just know that we've updated it. This is like our newest version of it because we wanted to make it better and better every single time because mm -hmm. uh, we're never done. We're never done learning. We're never done progressing. So this is almost perfect in, in our eyes. So that, that fat uh, melts. When you cook it, it's going to be nice and sturdy, have a little bit more chew than it did. It's just a really great recipe, and then we were able to make smash burgers. Yeah, so if you've been on our blog and you are familiar with the ground beef recipe, you know that you can do a lot with this recipe. So not just burgers, you can make meatballs, you can make sausages, you can make meatloaf. It really acts in the same exact way as a ground beef mm -hmm. does, which is really, really fantastic and something that we don't see a lot um, you know, on the commercial market. Correct. Yeah. So we were able to make this burger. One thing you should know if that you're doing this, these will be at a very high temperature. Mm -hmm. If you're, if you happen to have a uh, a uh, infrared thermostat, you can test your grill, which a lot of people do. Mm -hmm. uh, these are going to be around that 390 degree, you know, on the the plancha. This is going to be around 300. You okay. don't want to go too high. The reason being is that there are little sugars from like the beet powder and everything that's in there mm -hmm. that are going to burn a lot faster than, let's say, just salt and beef. Okay. So uh, you do it at a little bit lower of a temperature, but you're going to get that same crispy result. Mm -hmm. And we used our cheese on this. Mm -hmm. If you look at it, still got that great looking, you know, Meyer Ooh. reaction. We still got some great juice coming out of there. Mm -hmm. The cheese is wonderful, but it does not look very different side by side. No, nope, I don't think you can tell at all, all right. if you looked at it side by side. So this is, you know, for people who want to uh, not have ground beef for whatever reason, this is going to be a great thing to get that same flavor. Mm. Yeah, it's still really good. Right. Mm hmm. It's very meaty, lots of juice, mm -hmm. more importantly it holds together, it's got the right texture, it has the right flavors. I think this is as good a burger as any burger. Yeah. And mm. you co it cooks it's the really same, good. so you can still do it on mm. the griddle. You still salt and pepper it just like, you know, so you don't lose any of that experience. You don't have to go through any weird cooking process, it just cooks normal. Mm-hmm. Yeah. All right. So, I think that's pretty much everything yeah. we wanted to share with you today. So uh, hopefully you'll enjoy the rest of your grilling season by trying out some new smash burger, smash burger recipes. And until next week, from here in the Modernist Pantry Test Kitchen, I'm Janie. And I'm Scott.